all this Ryan Garcia and Sean O'Malley talk. All right, so I'm going to talk about this. Then I'm going to talk about George Mossadal calling out Chael Sonnen. And then I'm going to talk about Tony Ferguson and Jake Paul. And uh, sorry, I had a cough drop in my mouth. Anyway, uh, you should probably just start over. Mm, no, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, then I'm going to talk about Tony Ferguson, Jake Paul. But I want to start here because Oscar De La Hoya not only is down to let Garcia fight against Sean O'Malley in UFC, he wants to fight Dana White in the co-main event. Um, do you want to know the definition of a lose-lose for Dana? There's What possible upside is there for Dana White to fight Oscar De La Hoya in the co-main event? It's like, this, it's so absurd. Why would he do that? He's already beat you, okay? Like, you know how we talk about, uh, and by the way, I'm going to talk about the Sean O'Malley versus Ryan Garcia, like who would win that fight? You know, everybody just seems to think this is like a complete foregone conclusion. It's like, I mean, let me just throw this out there. Let me just at least, you know, put my two cents in. But, uh, but let, first I want to talk about the, <laughs> yeah, Dana versus Oscar De La Hoya. Oh yeah. Is that a good idea? Well, good idea for Oscar De La Hoya. Oh, why? Because Oscar will whip Dana's ass. No, that's not. That's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is this. Remember how me and Rogan were like, I don't know why Sean Strickland beat up Sneeko. He, of course, knows he can beat up Sneeko no matter what. It's like, right. Like, I mean, he wins no matter, like, everybody already knows. He doesn't need to do it because obviously he can beat him up. Yeah, I guess we're on board. Okay. Well, I mean, Dana White has beaten Oscar De La Hoya in every single possible category in life. Why on earth would he get into the ring and give Oscar De La Hoya the opportunity to beat him up? What does Dana get out of that? It's like just by existing, he is beating Oscar De La Hoya by standing there and being alive, right? So that's dumb. Uh, but, uh, oh, by the way, go ahead and subscribe to the channel yet. If you have not yet, I, uh, I'll probably accidentally ask you twice in this video because I already recorded the other part of it. But, you know, do, do your boy a solid. You know, subscribe to the channel. It's very helpful. Uh, anyway, so as far as O'Malley and Ryan Garcia, let me break this down for you guys really quick. Okay. So everyone is acting as if because Sean O'Malley is a mix is a mixed martial artist and and Ryan Garcia is a boxer that there is no way that Ryan Garcia could come in here and have any chance against Sean O'Malley in mixed martial arts. Dumb, okay, dumb. Do I think that Sean like would I bet on Ryan Garcia? Uh, no, hell no, hell no. I wouldn't bet on him. But okay, but given who. We're talking about, we're talking about Sean O'Malley, okay, who is a striker. Now, don't get your panties in a bunch. I am going to say that Sean O'Malley almost certainly wins the fight. But it's not the same as another striker versus, or, you know, I'm sorry, mixed martial artist versus boxer matchup. It's just not the same, okay? Because Ryan Garcia is, okay, let me, how do I put it? The reason why Sean O'Malley will win is because he has kicks and he'll be able to keep him at distance and he'll be able to work in a bunch of things and he'll probably just leg kick him into oblivion, right? Like that's how he'll win. Okay, well, what if they were just gonna stand there and they were gonna box? Like, let's say they were gonna do a bare knuckle boxing match. Who, who, do, you, who do you got? Probably Ryan Garcia, right? Right, okay. Well, so what I'm saying is what Ryan Garcia is exceptional at is controlling distance, right? Getting in and out. Closing distance quickly, landing, not getting hit, exactly what you would want to be good at in a mixed martial arts match. If someone's going to be throwing kicks at him, what he needs to do is control distance a little better when it comes to kicks. He needs to be able to check kicks, and then he needs to be able to recognize what type of kick is coming. My point is, he is an absolutely top-tier, pristine athlete whose entire skill set, his base, you know, his base skills are all things that apply directly to becoming good at stand-up kickboxing also. So if you give him six months to prepare and all he focuses on is transitioning from just being a pure boxer to being able to deal with kicks and punches, I'm sorry, you know, a, a kicking attack also, he's got a good chance of being pretty formidable, dude. Okay, now if he was going in there and he was gonna fight against Aljamain Sterling, then yeah, he's got no fucking chance, dude. None, no chance. Now, if Sean O'Malley decided he wanted to go in there and initiate a clinch and then turn it into a grappling match, then yeah, of course, Sean O'Malley's going to beat him there. But Sean O'Malley's going to, he's going to fight the way he fights, which is he's going to fight standing up and he's going to, you know, beat, you know, Ryan Garcia with kicks. What I'm saying is like a guy who is an absolutely elite, pristine boxer already, 
you know, getting to a place where he's good at also defending kicks. I'm not saying he needs to throw kicks. He can box, but he just needs to be able to defend kicks. And then he becomes a person who actually does kind of have a chance in that fight. Like I said, would he win? Probably not. But the idea it's impossible that he wins that fight is stupid, dude. Like stupid, stupid. About as stupid as, oh my God, Francis Ngannou has no chance against Tyson Fury. We learned that was not correct, right? Because all the skills that Francis had transitioned over to boxing, you know? So like a pure boxer, it works in reverse also. Bottom line. Anyway, go ahead and put in the comments if you think I'm totally out of my mind. It's okay if you do. Uh, let's move on though. So what do you do when you get out of the UFC and you're chilling and you're looking for something to do and you're like, well, I certainly like training and I like to fight. You got to find somebody who's also not in UFC, not under contract with UFC, who has the ability to fight you and the pickings are slim usually. But if you're George Masvidal, you can pretty much get the pick of the litter. But when I saw that he is now after Chael, he wants to fight Chael Sonnen, that was surprising to me. I was like, Chael Sonnen? I thought, I thought Masvidal and Chael are friends, you know? I was under the impression that they were friends. So uh, apparently uh, not anymore on Georgia's side or, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I just know that George is saying mean things about Chael and he wants to fight him. And I'm going to show you that. And then I'm also going to show you this little number, which is very interesting uh, because Jake Paul and, uh, you know, Tony Ferguson wants out of the UFC, wants to fight Jake Paul. And he doesn't give a single solitary F what Dana White says. All right. Um, well, I actually am going to lay out a plan where Jake Paul and Tony Ferguson could actually pull this off, uh, get Tony Ferguson out of his contract. Uh, but you know, that's only if Jake actually wanted to fight Tony Ferguson. So we'll talk about that. And that's what we're going to do. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, I love you guys for that. I, I looked at my analytics today and 50% of the people who watch my content have not subscribed. That is, we used to be at 70, 30 subscribed. Cause I used to always say like, Hey guys, like if you're going to watch my content, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Maybe I don't do that enough yet. So all I ask, if you're going to watch my content is that you subscribe. It takes one second. It's very helpful to me. So if you're going to watch my content, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, so on and so forth, etc. All right, so let's start with the George Masvidal one. And let's just listen to what George said because, uh, like I said, I was very surprised by the negativity coming out of his face. Chad would be one guy that I would love to break his eye over just because he's such a cheating fuck. Like, if you take... He, he's gotten caught with more substances in his body than any other competitor in the history. At one time, he had like six or seven different substances in his body for one of his title fights. It's like, you're a fucking piece of shit human being. You could go out there and hurt somebody just for you to fucking make a paycheck. Because when you're on steroids, as everybody knows, you become like a super soldier. So Chell would be somebody that I would love the fuck up, man. And I would just tell him, do all the steroids you want. It don't matter. I'm still going to break your fucking eye over it, bro. Did you guys have like a run-in or did he say something about you to where it's so personal now? A running? You, you crazy, bro. That guy, when he sees me, fuck, no way, bro. That guy's always been my biggest fan ever. Now, he's got them Twitter fingers, but there's numerous videos of him giving me praise and all this right. shit and this and that, you know. But, uh, no, it, you know, it really started kind of because of you. He, he started talking shit. I took your side. And I, and I really don't like this pussy anyways, you know. It's just yeah, fucking, it's my fault. A, yeah, no, it's not your fault. I'm the one that spoke up, but he's just a crotch sniffing bitch, you know, at his best, you know, at his best. Steroids, seven strands of steroids, training camp, six months. All he would do is hug a leg and fucking pray for a fucking uh, decision, you know? So not my cup of tea, obviously, and, um, and shit like that. And plus, he's a fake-ass gangster. What is it? This guy's got fucking, what, fraud real estate charges or something? Because he ain't definitely no fucking gangster. But, you know, it's that new age shit. People fucking say shit and do shit, and then your little followers and minions believe it, you know? Okay. <laughs> Dude, no one is better at talking about people talking trash than than uh, Moss at all. Like when he says stuff like he's like, man, now he's got the Twitter fingers. Like the way he does it, it's like uh, it's masterful, man. It's so dismissive of their uh, it's so dismissive of the person, you know, and yeah, now he's got the Twitter fingers. But uh, I don't know what to think about this, you know. I was under the impression they were friends. Apparently, they're not. I was also under the impression that him and Colby were friends. Apparently not. Uh, so, what do I know? What I do know is that if those two did fight, I'll buy it, dude. I will buy it. I'm just saying, I will buy it. Well, I will go, and I will have a fucking press pass, son. But, uh, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm rooting for both these guys. I want them. I want them to keep making money. And bottom line. 
I look at this whole thing different. It's like, would I like to watch a fight? Yeah, would I like to watch them trade barbs on a stage? Of course I would. You know? Is the fight as interesting as it would have been if they... Well, actually, God, man, they are way... I mean, what... You know what I just realized, actually? I just saw a thing about George being way heavier than he used to be. I don't, like... I mean, I did a video... I did a video about it being like, well, how do you guys know what he weighs? But, I mean, maybe. Chill's big, dude. Chill's a big fucking boy, man. Chill's a big-ass dude. Uh, but again, I have no idea what George walks around at if he's not trying to control his weight. So... I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's, it's interesting. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's interesting. So we'll see. But uh, let's move over to this story. All right. Let's move over to this story over here. Because Jake Paul called out by UFC Tony Ferguson and doesn't give a fuck about Dana White, man. All right. Well, let me tell you what, uh, what my thoughts on that are, right? Because there is a way for you to paint Dana into a corner where he has to let, has to let Tony out of his contract. All right. So Jake Paul's fought several MMA, UFC, yada, yada, yada. Let's just get over to um, Tony Ferguson's thing here because uh, Ferguson is why, he, bottom line, Tony Ferguson said he wants to fight Jake Paul. Look, I'm going to be real with you. I'm calling out Jake. I would love to fight you, dude. I don't call or talk to too many people or call them out, but Jake is is the one in a lot of these and up and coming people be, what? Uh, up and coming people. When I talked about insurance or for fighters and so on, I plant that seed and a lot of these other fighters, they go on and they take it to another level. Dude, Tony Ferguson takes credit for fucking everything, dude. <laughs> like, he really does, dude. He takes credit for literally everything. Like, I, there, anything that's ever happened in the UFC or in boxing or whatever, somehow he figures out a way where, like, he's, he, it's because of Tony. It's like, I mean, oh, you, you started the conversation about fucking fighter insurance? I mean, I don't know. Um, when it was suggested by another member on the podcast that UFC boss White would be furious if Ferguson at Ferguson, uh, if he agreed to fight Paul, the 40 year old said, I don't give a fuck what Dana says. He already, he knows already. He don't owe me shit. I don't owe him nothing. I've done enough for this fucking company. Well, I don't know if it's about what you owe or what you don't, uh, owe. I would say it's more about your contractual situation. Um, but here's the deal. So let's say hypothetically that uh, Jake did want to fight against uh, Tony Ferguson. Here's exactly what you do, okay? You would have Jake Paul go public and say, Dana White, are you really gonna hold Tony Ferguson contractually hostage and not let him get this payday given his situation where his he's probably, you know, he's probably at the end of his career he needs money for retirement. Are you really going to, you're going to enforce his contract and not let him come get this payday. And that way, you know, you actually put Dana personally in a situation where he has to explain why he wouldn't let him like not let Tony Ferguson go fight Jake Paul and, uh, and make that money. But let's talk about what I think about that fight, right? Like, what do I think about the actual fight? If let's say, I don't know, Jake Paul actually fought Tony Ferguson. Because there's a simple answer here, and it is not complicated. Jake Paul whips that motherfucking ass. Whips that ass, son. Whips that ass. Tony has no shot in that fight, dude. None. If he has even a moderately rattleable noodle, Jake's going to rattle it. He's going to put him down. That's not close. Jake beats that ass. There's no question. Boxing is not MMA. And Tony Ferguson is 40 years old. Jake is in the prime of his athletic career and he beat Anderson Silva. Okay. This, that's, there's, there's no chance Tony wins that fight. None. There is a high probability he takes a lot of damage. Now, I wanted to show you guys something else too. So in this article, they talked about, they're like, uh, you know, Tony Ferguson, uh, you know, people say this because he went on this long streak. Here it is. Uh, he, he celebrated for his 12, his incredible 12 fight win streak between 2013 and 2019. During this run, Ferguson won the 155 pound interim belt and defeated several high profile fighters like Rafael Dos Anjos, Anthony Pettis, and Donald Cerrone before falling to Justin Gaethje, uh, in May of 2020. Ferguson lost to Gaethje, uh, lost to Gaethje fight after getting knocked out in the fifth round and he never recovered from the brutal loss. And then since he's lost six straight, that's correct. Look at this. This is an ugly seven straight fights, right? It's like, and it just keeps, you know, it's like, okay, Justin Gaethje in 2020, you can't argue with that. Justin Gaethje whipped that ass, but like that, that was a scary, scary stoppage, man. You know, 
And then you go Benil Darius and it was, or Charles Oliveira just outclassed him, but didn't really do a lot of, you know, it was kind of like, all right, man, Oliveira really is nasty. Then Benil Darius kind of same thing. Then you got to Michael Chandler and Michael Chandler literally kicked his fucking head off his neck. Then you get Nate Diaz. He lost to Nate Diaz in, uh, in, you know, two, you know, a year and a half ago. Right. Then he loses to Bobby Green. Then he loses to Patty. It's like, dude, this is, I'm sorry, man. This is over. Like, I don't like being the one saying it, but this is over, dude. This right here is a wrap. So, um, I don't really have anything to add to this other than I would love more than anything to see Tony get that paycheck, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I, re- I feel like I'm always hammering Tony Ferguson. It's just because I can't really relate to him, you know? But at the same time, I would love to see him get paid. I would love to see Jake Paul pay him. I would love to see him get a big paycheck on his way into retirement. Because that's not going to happen with the UFC, you know? Um... I don't know. Do you guys want to see that fight? Do you guys want to see Tony? Do you want to see any of these fights? Do you want to see Chael fight fight Mosterall? You want to see uh, Ferguson fight Jake Paul? I would rather see Chael fight Jake Paul in MMA. Or George fight Jake Paul in MMA. I would love that. Actually, I would love to see George fight Jake Paul in boxing too. They should do that, dude. They should do that. Why not George versus Jake Paul in, in boxing? I'll go to that fucking fight for two. For show, son. Anyway, that's probably what I got for this video.